As they all got to their feet, lightning came from somewhere, but not from the planet's central star. It appeared that the pool and Pluplupanu glowed. There was sufficient light for them to be able to get around inside the temple, or whatever this place was, but Joey wondered what it would be like once they left this room. Would they be able to find their way around? Could they ever hope to get back to the ship on their own? He couldn't even remember which side of the step pyramid they'd come up. Behind his back, Sheriff Justice held a pair of sonic cuffs. If he got those on Vic, they'd never be able to get Vic out. Junior stood, staring and waiting. He didn't look like he was going to say anything, and Joey was certain that the officer wasn't going to do anything. June's hand had gone to her face, and Dexter and Argmon looked ready to pounce. At some point, Vic had pulled out his blaster. Joey had to do something, or this fight would ruin everything. Junior stood closest to Sheriff Justice, but June was between Joey and the officer. What could he do? Joey had only ever been in a fight once, and that was a fight for his life. He didn't want to fight. He wanted to get away. Vic leaned in and whispered something to Lou. Lou looked at June and nodded, and Vic gave Joey a wink. Put her there, pal. You've been a worthy adversary. You've gotten away from me once. The sheriff still stood with his hand out and a smug smile on his face. Vic lowered his gun and put a thumb in his pocket. You know, Buford, you put up quite a chase the first time. Of course, you were on a ship. I don't think you'd put up quite the same chase on foot. What? Pluplupanu started forward, and that's when Joey knew things were going to get ugly. I hate to interrupt, but my planet star seems to be failing. We must locate a power source soon, or I fear... Lou cut between Sheriff Justice and Vic, and scooped up June. Vic pointed and yelled something, and Dexter and Argmon also turned to run. Taking a step forward as Sheriff Justice brought the sonic handcuffs out, Vic gave him a shove into Pluplupanu. Joey gave Junior a shoulder in the same direction. As he'd hoped, Junior and Sheriff Justice collided before they could run into Blue Blue Panu. If that had happened, Joey was certain very bad things would happen and they didn't need to get the mightiest being on this planet any angrier at them. Joey couldn't be sure if the being was angry or not. They talked and it asked many questions but either didn't understand what they were trying to explain or it didn't care. Almost as if everything they said was beyond its comprehension or ability to care about. The only thing that had caused it to show any reaction was when the central star had gone out. Joey wondered if Pluplupanu felt the emotions of the replicants it had spawned and just how it could sense all of their thoughts. Junior and Sheriff Justice fell to the ground in a tangle of arms and legs in front of Pluplupanu. That could have ended badly. Nice work, kid. Now let's get off this rock. Vic put his hands on Joey's shoulder and the two of them started to run. Joey didn't question. He just ran. Lou had done a great job running with June over his shoulder, though her face had turned beet red and she kicked and screamed. Argmon reached out with two arms and took June from Lou. The three were able to kick it into high gear and started to pull away from Joey and Vic. Come on, kid! Vic sounded out of breath. Joey wasn't even certain that he'd be able to keep up at this pace. Argmon and Dexter set, but Lou had no trouble. The platform must have been nearly 500 feet across and it took forever to run. Joey didn't remember being that far back. Were they running toward the back of the platform? Vic! Vic! W which way did we come in from? Doesn't matter, kid. Just keep moving. We'll find our way back to the ship. Vic and Joey pulled up short as a small blob that looked exactly like Blue 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 came around a pillar and stood in front of them. I don't understand where you are going. We need to restore our star. We are running out of power. The scientists think we might be able to... The light from the planet's central star came on, distracting Pluplupanu for just a moment. Joey was about to say something, but Vic pulled on Joey's sleeve and the two started running once more. Again, Pluplupanu appeared in front of them. Joey looked back, and the one they'd just left moved back towards the large pool and jumped back in. Sheriff B.T. Justice and Junior were running, slowly, followed by another officer. Is there somewhere you need to be? Your friends are nearly at the base of my home. I can make sure the guards do not disturb them if you wish. Why do you need to leave in such a hurry? I had thought assisting us with the star was a priority for you. June and I were trying to explain to Pluplupanu that we know what's wrong with the planet star and that we might be able to help. Vic looked back. We'll have to talk about this later. We'll be back. Again, Vic grabbed Joey by the arm and started pulling. 
Joey tried to stop, but Vic only succeeded in stumbling forward. Hold on! Joey managed to pull himself to a stop before he got to the top step. Kid, everyone else is down there. Vic pointed to the base. That's where we need to be. Now, if you don't mind, I'd rather leave this place of my own free will and not in cuffs. Got it? They stood for a moment, staring each other down. Vic wasn't about to back off on this one. He didn't just look angry. He looked nearly possessed. Perhaps if Joey gave him a bit of time, he'd cool off and see that this wasn't a situation they were going to get out of easily. It wasn't a matter of getting away from Sheriff Justice. It was a matter of saving the inhabitants of this planet. They'd done something wrong, even if it was unintentional. They hadn't broken any laws he can think of, except for the last time they had to run in with Sheriff Justice, but that was some time ago. It didn't matter at the moment. Vic felt the need to escape. He'd come back for them twice. They might as well go to where they could talk about the situation quietly, rationally, and without interruption. Joey motioned for Vic to go first. Going down the big stairs was just as bad as it was the first time. They were supposed to have breakfast before things went horribly wrong and Vic got hurt. Plupupunu was supposed to be bringing them food and water. Joey wondered just how long it could be before they would stop and eat something. He tried to remember what Argmon had cooked for dinner the night before. It was some kind of meat that tasted vaguely like beef, but with a spicy tang to it. Joey licked his lips. Kid, wipe that stupid look off your face and get moving. We can't stand around waiting for them to catch us. Let's go. Vic was three steps down. Joey hadn't even realized he'd stopped. At the bottom, the two big blob guards stood with their spears and looked as if they were confused about what to do. Dexter and Lou stood next to Argmon. The Shathar had June slung over his shoulder, and she continued to kick, and he could hear her yelling, but he was glad he couldn't make out just what she said. It was not going to be anything nice, and would very likely be aimed at Vic. The stairs were much easier going down, but made his knees hurt from each little jump. By the time he caught up to Vic, they were both at the bottom, and June's fury came out. Joey felt his ears turn red with her colorful use of language discussing Vic's birthright, his private parts, and something about a post hole digger. If any of this bothered Vic at all, he showed no signs. Give these guards a wide berth. We need to find our way back to the ship. Vic motioned with his blaster and they all started running towards an open doorway. And if you don't turn around and head back up there, I'll make sure to tie your... June's voice had an edge to it that Joey didn't care for. She'd been mad at Joey before, but never like this. She had gone beyond mad into territory Joey hoped he would never see. He thought for just a moment that if he had stayed behind, Argmon might be able to talk to her and maybe calm her down. He could tell her his plan and talk to Vic and perhaps go back to Plupluplanu, figure out what to do to the planet to keep it from becoming destroyed or lose power and go dark. He wasn't even sure what might happen if the star inside the planet went dark. He was so far beyond his high school education that he questioned what he could possibly be doing that could be of any help. He'd spent months studying the SS Acid Rat and only just found out it used a black hole as its power source. Muffin, any luck? We're on our way back. How are things going? Vic talked to the air. Joey thought about asking Vic if he'd brought earpieces for them all, but Lou tossed something to Joey. He shoved the earpiece in. And why did you tell me to have a conversation with Bob over the general con? Now he thinks I'm supposed to just sit here and talk to him. I told you how I felt about that. Joey almost pulled the earpiece back out. Vic was getting yelled at by more than one woman on his crew. Muffin, I'm not asking you about how things are going between you and Bob, so please stop talking about that. Vic held up his hand to stop the group as they finally made it to the doorway. They had been running at a slow jog that had all but quieted June down. Joey took a moment to put his hands on his knees and try to keep from throwing up. He needed to get himself in shape if they were going to keep doing things like this. He'd gotten too used to just sitting around the ship and studying or talking with the rest of the crew. All right, Muffin, what were you able to figure out? What's happening with the star and just how long do we have to get out of here? Vic motioned for them to follow him around the corner. Behind them, the two guards turned and looked at each other, and Joey thought they shrugged, if that was possible. Going around the corner, they passed into a room with a gigantic fountain. Four blobs stood around the fountain, looking into the water, and occasionally putting their hands into the water, and then putting their hands near their faces, as if to look closer at the water, or smell it, or something. None of these had spears, and must not be guards. Joey thought. For that matter, none of them had mouths, or noses, 
He wondered what other senses they had if they only had eyes. Did they eat? Did they even need to breathe? Victor, the star is doing fine right now. It appears to give off massive amounts of solar radiation, and I sent some smaller probes to monitor the star and the surface of the planet. It appears that the star isn't real. It's an artificial star, and when it goes dark, I can detect the basic structure. Holes at the poles open when the star goes dark, as if it's trying to let something in. Perfect. Thank you, Muffin. You're a dear. We're on our way. Vic turned to the rest of them. I think we may have a way out of here. Let's move. Joey had a feeling this perfect plan was about to end badly, but what could he do about it? You've been listening to Hollow, v a Shipping, Book 2, written and read by J.R. Murdoch. For more information about this production and its author, visit jrmurdoch.com. There are a lot of ways you can choose to spend your time. Thank you for choosing to spend it with me.